Hi, welcome to the City of Clayton. We've prepared some videos for you to watch to help educate you in some of the apparatus that we carry and some of the tools that we carry. I hope you enjoy. Today we're going to go over putting inspections into emergency reporting. You'll notice here on your home tab you have all these to choose from. We're going to choose occupancy. Now this you can do on the tablet um, when you're out in the field so that way you don't have to come back and put it in after you've already wrote everything down. So this helps eliminate that. So there's several ways to look up an occupancy. You can go by name, you can go by the address, you can just put in the, the first three or four numbers of the address and pull it up that way. You can go by zone, you can go by station, you'll see that everything's at station 85, majority of everything. Um, you can choose from B shift to make it simplify if you want to go that way with it, or you can actually choose from the inspector. So let's say I want to go Jamaica, but you'll notice that if I put B shift and Jamaica, it's not going to it's not going to match up. So you have to put Jamaica and C shift, and that'll pull up all the inspections for C shift. All right, so what we're going to do is I've already done a couple within the past couple days, so we'll go ahead and we'll pull up by name. This way you can kind of see where I'm going. I'm going to use OM Oil as an example because they've got quite a bit going on in that facility. And OM Oil is right here. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here where I edit occupancy. Click on that and go down through here and make sure everything's correct. The address, the name, um, Dayton, the zip code, all that good stuff. You'll see the longitude and latitude with this number here, this number actually populates hydrants that are going to be in this location. And we'll get to that tab when we get to that point. Um, you'll say occupancy type, you'll choose from that. This is a service station, gas station, and station that is located. And then you'll go through and you'll billing status and critical information. This is definitely oil and gas. Um, you'll have your occupancy. Uh, this one I know the year that it was built, so I went ahead and filled it in, and then the inspector. And then just a little bit of a notation, occupancy history, it's always been a 571. So then from there, you always hit save. If you do not hit save, it will not save the information. You can go to the next tab, come back, and it'll all be gone. Now, you can use these tabs in any which format that you would like. Um, for me, if I start my inspection, I want to start with my pre-fire plans. So normally when I'm on, on the scene or at the building that I'm inspecting, I'll pull this up. And what this does is it gives me the building height, number of floors, if there's a basement present. Um, you can put one, it really doesn't matter or mess with the square feet calculation. Even if it doesn't have a basement, at least it's not zero. Um, you'll put in your measurements, and that's why we have the wheel that we carry with us, the measurement wheel, so you can get those, so we can fill in the need of the fire flow. So it does that calculation for you. Uh, you ask for the fire load, it's combustible, and does it have sprinklers? This does not, so that's no. Fire alarm panel, no. Master key, no, they do not have an ox box. Um, you do need to put in the time that's normally occupied. This is Monday through Sunday, 24 hours from 06 to 0100, all seven days. Um, it has a gas shut off on the B side of the structure. Uh, electrical panel, outside B side, of the structure that's your main shut off and inside of occupancy, the B side, and that's in the back room. Um, this in itself has a metal roof and ventilation problems would be the metal roof. I also went through and it has hazmat notations. Um, it's got propane tanks out by the front door, um, 15 feet away, which is by code. Um, I also put out a, an ice freezer in front just in case there's something that goes wrong with that with hazmat. Uh, you also have the emergency shutoff for the gas pump is on the inside of the structure. That kind of stuff is very important. You can also put that in your pre-fire plans, which is also here. Uh, again, main pump shutoff is inside. Uh, and you'll see where I just put my notes that I feel is going to be comparable and stuff that we need to make sure of. If you'd like to add any other chemical inventory or anything, hit that, add chemical. Again, whenever you're finished, hit save. Uh, you can either then go on to inspections, but again, I like to come back and look at the protection system. 
Now remember me showing you that longitude and latitude that was on the first screen right here on your info page. That's what's pulled up here when you put in the address. It automatically populates. You do not have to do that. So your fire protection system, again, you'll see that the closest hydrant's 150 feet away. And in this case it is, because it's actually in front of La Fiesta. And that's where that location is. Um, fire department connections, no. And I know this because there's no system to it. Uh, sprinkler room, no, nothing. And water supply info, you'll see I put La Fiesta and Greenview, which is to the right. There is a hydrant down on that side also. And again, you'll see the addresses here. But this is just a little bit more of a description of where they're at. Uh, if you have any files or anything, or um, a lot of times what happens is we'll get stuff from like Silco or something where they've tested or did something with the system, uh, that will come to me and I will scan them in and I will attach the file. Any permits from here on out that we've had, we'll attach those also. Okay, so what I like to do next is go to contacts because with this contact information, it will pull over into the inspections and that way you can do the emailing and anything else that you need to do. Our goal is to be paper free. Unfortunately, OM does not have an email address that they could give me so I could send the inspection. So what I did is I emailed it to myself and I'll print it off and I will take it to them personally. Um, so if you're wanting to edit, let's say you've already been in here and you've got all this good stuff in here, you're going to go ahead and click that and you'll see it pulls it all up. You're going to need, like if they're the manager, if they're the tenant, if they're the owner, anything that they're that you're getting this information from, whatever applies to them. So he is the manager. The owner is actually in India, so there's no speaking to this gentleman. So the phone number to the business, email again, nothing is available. Um, address, you can put in his address there or you can put in the actual address of the facility. Um, and then after hours, I always like to get that one or you can get it in a cell phone, whichever way, it's, it's whoever we're gonna contact if anything should happen to the building. So again, once you're done with that, save. Do not go any further than that. So then we're gonna go to inspections. Um, when you start an inspection, it's gonna come up looking like this. Make sure that you are an inspector. And you're gonna hit that, and you're gonna hit now, which will bring up the time and date and all that good stuff. Inspection type is always gonna, well, when you first start off, it's always gonna be an annual. And you need to go to annual inspection form. Any other form will not give you the stuff that you need. Otherwise, the forms are extremely large and long. Like for instance, if I open up this one, you're gonna see that it's gonna pull up more than what you care for inspection wise. So we don't want that. So we're gonna go back to inspections. And unfortunately, you cannot change that. So this is probably a good thing that we got in here because what's gonna happen is I have a chance to, to go back out and delete the form. So we're going to come back here to contacts, go back to inspections, and you'll see that right here, I have a choice to delete that. We're throwing that one in the trash because we don't want that anymore. That's not what we wanted. So again, you're going to start an inspection, and you're going to hit now, and you're going to go to the forms. And again, you want annual inspection. Now, you'll see that I want this, that's my contact information that will pull also over his email address if there was one in there. Um, like I said, this gentleman did not have one. I'm going to hit next. Inspection type is required. Oh, sorry. It's nice that it does that. So you can hit next. Now, I want to go back to this real quick to the inspection form. Uh, you'll notice here that you can set an inspection or you can do a set, you can set an inspection schedule to where if you want to do this every March 2nd forever or you can do a single setting so that way the next shift that comes on if you're not here they'll know what to do. So we'll go ahead and we'll, I want back in there so I'm going to hit the little tablet for edit. It definitely goes on the one and two, you can hit save. The good thing is this page mainly saves itself so, but I would always hit save especially if you're out in the field. Now, there's a couple little things with this that make it really super easy and super nice so that way you don't have to click everything and edit and everything. So most, the majority of everyone, egress is gonna be part of the thing. If it passes, you'll click above in that field, bulk, and then you have a choice to pass it, fail it, or not applicable. So let's say we wanna pass it, okay. So let's say that I want to add something to it. The good thing is, 
you can add whatever you want and still leave it past or let's say oh wait I decided I wanted that one to fail and it says need to clean area okay. so then I'll hit save on that because remember if you don't save it it's not going anywhere now you'll see that I've got all these passes and this one I chose for fail needs to clean area okay so we'll go to the fire protection area well he doesn't have that they don't have a knox box but that's been correctly done uh, don't have that and that's correct don't have a hood system so I just click those two so I can go back up here but yes those two passed okay so as you go through here you're gonna see that you have the choice to choose everything or just pick what you'd like or what applies to the inspection that you're doing uh, down here at the bottom if this is the first time that this has been put on ER reporting then you want to definitely go through um, these are questions that are set up by the development department um, just ask the questions you'll click on it you can add remarks do whatever um, if you do have something that's substantial go ahead and forward it forward it on your BC and then they can forward that on the chief so that way they can get next door and have them address the situation with the occupancy. So with that, we're done with two. Remember, always hit save. So you're gonna hit next. Now we're here, so you have a choice whether you're gonna issue a citation, pre-plan, anything along that line. So this person passed. Um, even though they have a couple of minor things, I can make a choice to come back and see them again or pass it. So if I wanna come back and see them, I'm gonna put failed and then We'll go from there and, and schedule a, a, another appointment or along that line. But we're gonna hit pass on this one and then go on to the next. And again, this is where if you filled out everything in the contact information, it should pull over everything. So we're gonna add an email recipient. So this little guy here, you'll see that the manager didn't have anything. But if there was an email in there, it would populate directly over to here. And you're gonna see that I can put my emails already in there because that's who I signed in under was me. Um, at this point, if you wanna directly type something, this will pop up on the email on the first page when they open it up, say, hey, you know, this is from Bernice, thank you so much for your participation or whatever. You do not have to put anything in there because this will already be sent over to an email as, a, as an attachment, so you don't have to worry about that. So then you're gonna get the inspector signature. This is all finger touch on the tablet and submit. And this signature here, um, I'm just gonna put OM because it does want a contact name or you can click use con contact name, which is super nice. And then you'll sign, have them sign it, submit like everything's good and I'll send an email and that email will come to me and it will go to the person that's we put the email address down for uh, when you are finished you're gonna go ahead and put in your password that you signed in with and that way you can finish the inspection and that's pretty much it. Now, if you ever need to get back in there or if you wanna see what's going on, let's say I wanna see, we're gonna look at all the pass and all the fail. We're like, okay, let's see what we got here. So you'll see that it populates this. And this is what they see too, and this is what you're gonna get on your email. It's nice because it has a signature, the date, the time, everything that you need. So if need be, like for this OM, I need to copy this or I need to print it off and take it to them since they didn't have an email address. Um, and if you decide you don't want that inspection, you're gonna unlock it. So now it's unlocked, I can trash it. And that's the one I didn't want. If there's any questions, um, you can get with your VC, they should be able to help you or your full-time person, uh, they will be able to review it with you.